Hello gamers, welcome back to Standard Humans, just having some quality banter. The um, banteriest banter. Aiden had the topic you wanted to discuss today, and that is... University. Yeah. How to play university. Or how to study as well, if you don't want to play, you know. That's fair, you could also do that too if you <laughs> want to be lame. <laughs> I'll just do a little dad joke in there for you. Anyways, I think I wanted to try and start this episode uh, a little bit more clearly than I did last time, because I tried to do some sort of weird metaphor last time. That the <laughs> yeah, that, that so. was, that's what that, do you know what that is? That's when you, at the beginning of a plot line, introduce something, but don't exactly say what it is, and you, the audience themselves has to figure it out, and then it's revealed at the end what it actually is by me, the genius who figures it all out in my head. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, as a piece of entertainment, it's pretty good, but when you want to try and get a point across, I don't think it's quite as effective if no one knows what the point is before the absolute last second. So, I think I wanted to start out just with, like, the intention or the general gist I kind of want to get across today. Let me know if you kind of agree with it, is that with university okay. and with a lot of, you know, other like higher education type of things. High school. More so university because you kind of have to do high school. <laughs> <laughs> but with university, like trying to choose it, there isn't really any one right path to take. And you have to use it as a tool and like try and customize it to fit your life and to service like what you want to do later on in life to make a... Uh, uh, your life better and then hopefully us, us talking about our lives and what we've doing what we've and been our doing. mistakes so many yeah <laughs> <laughs> it'll help you know what to do and probably more so what not to do it's a lot easier to point out what not to do than what to do i think to start off we should start by saying kind of what we have been doing what like program and university go through how like the thought process a little bit and the reasoning why we did what we did both as, again, what to do and what not to do. Okay, so, yes, I, Evan, am in 2B, so the second semester, second year of ecology, which is environmental biology, at the University of Waterloo. Graduated high school, graduated elementary school even, uh, and I like uh, cuddling by the fireside in winter. Nice, that's a good summary of who you are. <laughs> your journey <laughs> but you're in ecology why ecology well i didn't actually choose ecology first time around when i was in grade 12 applying to all these universities um first of all a gap year didn't actually come to my mind at mm -hmm. all because i thought i knew exactly what i wanted to do oh okay yeah but we'll come to that later yeah yeah for sure just, just put a little pin in that but I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do, which was physics slash engineering, some sort of physics, mathematical based subject. So I applied to the physics, like honors physics and uh, chemical or general engineering, depending on the school. But I applied to three schools and I applied to both of those engineering and physics uh, at all three schools I applied to, which were Carleton, uh, University of Waterloo, where I am and Un University of Toronto. And I decided on... So you applied to six <laughs> different programs? Uh, yeah, so six programs, three different schools, engineering and physics. And I my first choice was physics at Waterloo. Yeah. And I got into it. So I'm like, hell yeah, dude. So I went uh, when I was 17 still, and 17 for the first semester, first year, pretty much the whole semester. Um, and how did you decide that physics was the one that you wanted to go for? Just from high school courses, physics physics and calculus were always my favorite courses. And so I was like, well, I, I, like I enjoyed them, but I also like, they were my best grades by far, physics and calculus, mm -hmm. except yeah. for like nutrition class, but. Fair enough. <laughs> I knew I didn't want to be like a personal trainer or anything. Yeah. I like to do it for myself, but I feel like if it was somebody else, I would just get frustrated. Yeah, I can see I that. Like, just yeah. do it, man. <laughs> um, Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yeah, exactly. That would literally be me, just like a 65-year-old like woman. 
so physics uh, in Waterloo. Uh, that, so I was like, hell yeah, dude. I, I do well at physics and, and math in high school. Uh, I'll just go into it. So when I got to university, it was, it was quite a change for sure because I moved to a new city seven hours away, other side of the province, which isn't that big, but I mean, Canada's pretty large. Yeah. So other side of the province is actually significant. Especially Ontario. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, living with all new people, I barely knew anybody. I, like two or three people from our graduating year came here. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a decent amount, yeah. I guess most of them stayed in Ottawa. Almost all of our graduating yeah. year stayed yeah. in Ottawa. So then... Uh, but I wasn't really enjoying it that much. Like I was getting pretty good marks. Like I was able to keep like an 80 average or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it was just the more I did it when I was like only doing physics and math, the more I was like, I don't really want to do this for the rest of my life because it's nothing I find particularly like I'm nothing. It's nothing I'm particularly passionate about. It's just like I'm just like good at doing this like in my brain. Yeah, yeah but it wasn't what i was like particularly like interested or passionate about and i found that that was more natural stuff like i would always be like most interested when i'm reading news or something if it's like oh hey this is going on with trees or and i, I read um the secret life of trees by peter Voloben, and that was quite good and that was just like sort of sh- showed me that i was like i am more interested in natural stuff and more like passionate about that and i love being outside anyway so I transferred into ecology and it has been super fun. I like almost all of my ca- classes except for biochem. Biochem can f- right off. Uh, yeah, so I haven't had any regrets at all about switching. I like I'm going to take a lot more math courses. I take maths and languages for my electives because languages I just like to speak them. Okay. And yeah. maths because they're a bit of an average booster like from getting not so good grades and i'll just take a math and it'll boost it up usually Fair. yeah yeah and yeah. yeah same with you yeah yeah definitely and that's where we are now do you know what you want to do with the ecology like what job or oh yeah kind of thing you want to get well i actually worked backwards i when it was first semester first year and i was not really enjoying my program what i did was i looked at jobs that i would be super interested in specifically based on like why being like measuring wildlife numbers for like fish and stuff like that, like population mechanics sort of thing. Okay. And yeah. so like animal technicians and stuff like that and worked backwards to see what... An animal technician? Not animal technician. Sorry, not animal <laughs> technician. Um, fisheries technician. Oh, okay. Which is where you just get a bunch of fish, eggs, and sperm and just mash them together. Oh, yep. All right. And then uh, you get a bunch of uh, fish eggs that are fertilized, and you just dump them into ponds. Interesting. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. Depending on what fish need to be, like that makes mean, sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's basically like test tube fish kind of thing. Pretty much. Yeah, we're making <laughs> oh, super fish out here, baby. Okay. Um. So I just I was like, oh, that. and stuff same as silviculture, which is like tree managing and stuff and like oh, okay. seeing what tree populations how they're doing interesting which ones need more of which means you need less and stuff like that and so i looked at all these jobs and on one specific website i found you could find a bunch of jobs and it could say what degrees were useful to get this job oh, so okay. i good. found that all the jobs i looked at ecology or environmental biology were very useful yeah, it sounds to, like that would be very yeah, applicable. To get into it. So yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'll just do environmental biology. Okay. And now I did. And are currently doing. And I'm currently doing it. Yeah, I think that's definitely the best way to do it is to start from the job that you want to get and then see what program or what degree you need yeah. to do that. It, the reason it didn't work for me for me in high school was because I'm like, oh, I just want to be like a physics prof, dude. That's f-ing cool. Like do research and stuff. That's fair. But then, yeah. like, it's very different doing a subject in high school and then actually doing it all day, every yeah. day. Because yeah. I was, you know, I had, like, two or three physics courses in one semester and the rest were math. And then I was just, like, you know, doing it every day for, like, six hours. And I was like, wow, this is really boring. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, not really as is. into it as I thought it was. As I thought I was. Mm-hmm. So... 
Yeah, that strategy isn't foolproof, but it's a good way to uh, plan out a little bit. How did you get to aerospace engineering? Yeah, so I am currently uh, halfway through a bachelor's of engineering with a major in aerospace. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> when it t came time to pick a program, uh, people just kind of, I think, expected me to go to university. I don't really know. There was another option. That's just what everyone was kind of doing. Yeah. So I was like, all right, what am I going to do? Well, Evan said he's going to do physics. That sounds chill. I could Hell do that. yeah, dude. So I was like, all right, I'll go do physics. Then I thought, wait, space is also cool. It I is. could combine physics and space and do astrophysics. So I applied to astrophysics at U of T. That was one of my three applications. But I needed to get two more because you pay, was it like 150 bucks? And then you get three applications to universities. And then you have to pay like 50 for each other one. So I needed to do at least three. It's really wacky. They're like $150 for three and then $50 for each one past that. And I'm like, all right, so $50 per application. Yeah, with a minimum of three. Yeah. Yeah, so I needed at least three. So I was like, all right, um, other space things. I guess aerospace engineering, that sounds very similar. I'll just apply to that at uh, U of T, which is a part of the engineering science program. And yeah. then I also just applied to aerospace engineering at Ryerson because I needed another one. And they're like Toronto, dude. Yeah, that was pretty much the idea. Notice Me I'm not from Toronto, so I say Toronto instead of Toronto. 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 I think all Canadians are supposed to say it Toronto. You don't, ah, you don't pronounce the T. I'm a foreigner. Wow, get out. Yeah, yeah so... I applied to those and fully expecting to just do the astrophysics. But then I realized that science sounds really repetitive and boring <laughs> and I don't want to do that. So I decided to do engineering instead. And I was planning on going to the one at U of T, but then I didn't quite make the cut because I think I would have needed at least like 97% average Jeez. to get into engineering science that year. Yeah. Well, engineering science is also literally like the hardest program ever to get into. Yeah, I know. Except for maybe engineering <laughs> physics. Oh, yeah. Which is also wacky. Fair. Yeah. No, that was. I think, those they're, are about, rough. I think they're, they're pretty similar programs, actually. So they're probably about the same to get into. Probably, actually, yeah. So, yeah, that was insane. Um, I did actually get accepted to astrophysics, but I decided not to go and just went to Ryerson instead. <laughs> To do aerospace engineering. Take that U of T, suck my left n Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was kind of the process that I went through to pick something. Notice how there was absolutely no mention of jobs or what I'll do afterwards, which was poor planning on my part, but I didn't feel like well, I needed to plan. I just needed to pick something. It might have uh, been, but to be fair, engineering is one of those programs where you'll just... You pretty much know what your job is. You're going to be an engineer. That's After, fair. It's yeah. the same stuff as like nursing. It's like when you finish a nursing degree, you're just going to be like a nurse. Or when that you makes finish sense. a teaching degree, yeah. you're just going to be like a teacher. Hmm. So. That's true. Yeah. It's pretty specific. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Inside oh, yeah. Engine. There's a huge range. Like, but like engineer is like a specific like job title. Like yeah. a, a environmental biologist isn't really a job title. Hmm. So I would be more like specific. In the sciences or pretty much anything that's not like a specific profession like a professional i guess degree mm -hmm. uh you should be really careful that there's actually jobs <laughs> fair because if you're like oh i just find it really cool and then you do it it doesn't matter if you, there's no jobs because then you won't be doing it yeah pretty much be smart so you do have to be very careful about that and then with engineering degrees too it, i think they're generally pretty good like some people i've heard it uh called pre-business <laughs> yeah because it's slightly better than just a general business degree because you actually technically know how to do something. Mm -hmm. So then you can go do like an MBA afterwards and like go into finance and make like loads of money. Or at least that's apparently what you used to be able to do. Well, a lot of people now like that I know, like their parents are at, like they started working at a company as engineers and okay. have an engineering degree. But then they just moved farther and farther away from the actual applied mm -hmm. work. And, As you go more into management, kinda? and just went into like management, mm -hmm. finance, and just general business and stuff. 
So even without a business degree, you can still turn into like a business job. Yeah, you can still transition. I think that's how you start making some real money too. You, yeah. you, you don't get that as an engineer. <laughs> no, you don't. Really. You know, well, you can get pretty good money. You can, but... you can get decent money. It depends on where you live more so yeah. than anything else. It's if you're more... an engineer for like Tesla, you'll probably make pretty good money. There, yeah. But you're working like what, 80 hours a week or something? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know. It's insane. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that's pretty much where I am now. Did you feel like there were any other really options that you could take in like grade 12 afterwards? Like well, other than university, really? I thought about it briefly because one thing I didn't really like about like our school system, I think it's prevalent across like pretty much the whole country probably, yeah. but maybe not Quebec because I have Cégep. Cégep is basically like in Quebec. High school goes till grade 11, and then you have two years, sometimes three, if it's a more specialized CEGEP program, but it's basically like the second part of high school that everyone or almost everybody goes to. The only difference is you can actually get a specific diploma from CEGEP. Mm-hmm. Like my cousin, she graduated as like an x-ray technician or something just from CEGEP. Okay. So she was like 20 years old. And had like a specific degree and she went right into a hospital and started working. Oh, that's cool, so, actually. Yeah, it's kind of blessed. Because then also it's very common to go to CEGEP and then go to university or college yeah, or something yeah. or apprenticeship. But you don't have to. Mm. So I think something like that c- could be pretty useful for the rest of Canada. Maybe, I mean, it would be basically very difficult to implement at this stage. But Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't really consider stuff other than university like i thought about it for a second and i'm like college might be interesting and i like chatted with my parents about stuff like that but they're like you've always been a very academic person like you get very good grades in school so we think you would get frustrated if you did like a program like that and then found a job that wasn't as intellectually demanding Mm -hmm. as you may be used to Oh, okay. And so you might like not be living up, you wouldn't be living up to your full potential. Hmm. And I, so I agree. Somewhat, yeah. There's other, there's definitely other ways to use your intellect, but if you can get paid for it, then <laughs> that's a, a decent, a decent way to spend your brain, I guess. Yeah, even the way you describe it, it, it's a strange thing that I found is that most of the people, like teachers or parents, they kind of look down on a lot of the other options. Like if you don't go to university, it's lesser. Like what you just said, like you're not living up to your full potential if you don't get a degree at university. Yeah. If you go to college or do an apprenticeship or something. Yeah, exactly. That's that's very common. And our, our school program was sort of, it had like hierarchies basically of like, big brainness <laughs> yeah so it top was like, level was university top, top level was university level courses in immersion true that's the true biggest brain move you can possibly do in your entire life and then people in core just aren't as yeah smart. and then below that is university level but core yeah. so they're monolinguals and filthy yeah so, <laughs> <laughs> so and we could talk shit about them in french we never would because that's f-ing rude but we could if we wanted to. <laughs> and then below that, this isn't actually, by the way, this isn't actually what I believe. This is just how it was designated for, basically the way it worked was like however good at school you were is like where you'd be. Even to like immersion, if you were better at school, I found you were more likely to be in immersion, yeah. which is ridiculous because it's just a different language. Instead of English, it's French. Yeah, there were a few so... exceptions of people who were just able to speak French. Yeah, but general rule of thumb, if you were in immersion, you were better at school. Yeah, which was weird. Yeah. And then but like and then if you like didn't like school as much, it seemed like as a theme you would gravitate towards um college. And then if you were like looking to go into a trade like a mechanic or like a paramedic or something, I don't know if a paramedic's a trade. But like a mechanic or a paramedic or something like that, you would go yeah. and like locally developed. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I always found it was super weird because I'm like what if you're really smart but just want to go to college and you take college level courses that's even the the teachers would sort of be like oh i think you can handle it at university like i don't think you need to go to college or like college level or anything which was it was very odd to hear 
just to clear that up for people in case that was like a lot of information. So there were like three tiers of kind of intelligence at the school, top tier. It wasn't. University. It wasn't actually. It wasn't actually how intelligent you are. It it should, it's not based on that at all. It's just like what you plan on doing after high school. That's true. And like what language you spoke. But it did tend to like your academic skill did tend to be the main divider in what program you studied in high school. That's very true. It wasn't actually based on like your intelligence. It was totally university courses are the only ones that count towards a university and college courses don't count towards a university. They count towards college. Yeah, exactly. And then I don't know what locally developed counts towards. I guess like what well, is for long. like trade school, but I'm a okay. construction mechanic. Okay. But so yeah, you could say if you wanted to take the math class, you could take the three levels, either university, college, or locally developed. And then there's also, like you said, the option of either taking immersion French, which was having a bunch of courses in French, or core, which is just having the one French course. Or you could just not take French at all yeah, you after could take grade no nine. French at all. Too. Yeah, that's true. Or could but, you just not yeah. take it at all during high school and like take a Spanish class or something as your did, second language? Did we have Spanish? Yeah, there was a Spanish class. Oh. I think like maybe Spanish and Italian one. No sé que hay español, pero sé que hay italiano porque cool. mi amigo lo, lo tuve. Sure, man. That's nice. That's yeah, real nice. We have Spanish here now, and it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we had it there. So I don't know if you could have just not taken French. But everyone took French. Uh, yeah, yeah, everybody everybody in university level usually took French. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Wait, but it was very weird. Yeah, it wasn't actually based on your intelligence at all, but it tended to divide, like, you would move into, like, the different programs based on how academically inclined you were. Yeah, how good you do in school. Yeah, even though say that, you can move up to university. Yeah, exactly. There, yeah, that's it's like if you're doing really well in college, like Ooh, in like grade ten. If you're in like college level, then they might be like, "Oh, I recommend you move up to like university level, like courses." Even though it's it's not supposed to be based on academic inclination, it's supposed to be based on future career. Yeah, so it's it's supposed to totally be based on where you want to go afterwards, but kind of the implied or what really happened was a lot of the time intelligence, not necessarily for the French thing. There were a lot of smart people in core, yeah. but. It's but there, the, if you, there, were, there was there was a, a tendency towards yeah. more academically inclined no, people taking immersion. But yeah, so I think it shouldn't be divided like that. I think it should be purely based on what you plan on doing as your future career. Obviously, not a hundred percent because most people, even in, until like grade twelve, don't know what they want to do. Yeah. But just sort of based on like, do you want to have a more research based or teaching based job or like very numbers based which would be university or do you want to work more like with people and more like applied and hands-on stuff which would be college or if it's, do you want to do like a trade or something like that like plum or whatever then you do locally developed mm -hmm. i think it would be nice to have a little transition towards that way yeah i don't know how you could take the almost like hierarchy of intelligence out of it though a lot of a nice. lot of it was just from the students as well. That's true. A lot of it was students. Like teachers would say, "Hey, this is an option," but no one really took that seriously. Yeah, I think because like it it was seen as like, oh, if you you're in university immersion French, oh, you're pretty smart. You're pretty good at school, yeah. <laughs> which is unfortunate. I think because looking back, if I know if I knew what I know now, I would have given college a much harder look. I, I've never like tried it, but from what I've heard, I think I'd enjoy it a lot more because college is like actually yeah. doing the thing that you want to do, like learning it, how to it, do the job. It, it does sound a lot more, it sounds more structured than university, at least from what I've heard, because I don't think there's a college course anywhere. I might be very wrong. I haven't really looked into it, but I don't think there's a college course anywhere that's 40% midterm, 60% final exam. There, I, they seem to be a lot more like multiple projects, multiple tests sort of mm -hmm. thing, which I think is nice. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. university seems to be purely like, okay, read the book, do the test. That's what you're here for. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's which entirely is it. kind yeah. of whack. It really is. Yeah. It, it's a real pain. So yeah, I, I really wish there was... I don't know, more of an emphasis on that it's really, like, as good of an option. I don't know how yeah. you could do that, because, like you said, with all the students, 
everyone said, oh, yeah, you're going to college. Ha ha. You, <laughs> it's yeah. not as smart. Not as smart. <laughs> is ridiculous. Like I've heard from friends in like similar programs uh, in university and college, like um, the game design programs at like Carleton and Algonquin. Yeah. And they ha- have universally agreed Algonquin trumps it. Yeah. It's so much better because you get you get so much hands on experience and they have all sorts of uh, programs with actual like gaming companies and stuff. Dang, I didn't uh, know that. Opposed to Carlton, which is just kind of coding. It's just like, hey, you can code now, great. But do you have any experience doing what you want to do? Yeah. No. Okay, Whereas Algonquin, go. <laughs> like they get you to do like an art course so that you're able to communicate with like graphic designers and a bunch of other stuff like that. And like the program they have, I think the top person is guaranteed like an internship at uh, Ubisoft or something wow. like that. Wow. Holy yeah, that's something like cool. that. Yeah, so it's a much better program and is really worth like another and look. It, it's yeah. the same jobs they're competing for too, and the college program is preparing you better, but much better. Yeah. From if if you would have asked me that in high school, if there were any jobs that you could get hired, you would have a better chance of getting hired for from a college course than a university course. I probably would have been like, no. Yeah. What are you talking no, same. About? Like, it just didn't seem, like, as good of a program yeah. or as good of a qualification. And I, sp- I suppose uh, you will usually make more money from university. That's true. If you get a job. <laughs> which That's a big if. A lot of people from university are struggling with because they're really good at reading books and really good at writing tests, but they have no job experience. And they don't know. How, they've never had, like, a real job before. <laughs> Yeah, so so many people are uh, discovering that having a job is actually really different from reading books and writing tests. So that's probably why we have so many 28-year-olds working at Starbucks still. <laughs> yeah, like you can't just go to class and do the tests, get the degree. That's not going to really get you a job Yeah. so much. It's more so about the experience you have getting the degree and the people you meet while you do it. And the jobs you hopefully work during your degree very but, true because a lot of i find a lot of people from university are a lot more socioeconomically well off obviously this isn't always the case because we have you know government financial support and stuff yeah. but if i find there's a lot of people in university who like obviously come from a decent amount of money and they've like never had jobs before <laughs> before university so they're trying to get co-op jobs and they've like never done a job interview they like haven't made a resume before and stuff and so they're like struggling a little bit because they don't know how to do that stuff whereas i feel you i again i might be wrong i don't know but i feel you might be a little better prepared with stuff like that from college because you actually have more work or work-like experience i think that also depends on what university you go to like i find like a lot of people at ryerson do have the work experience it's just not the type of school schools as much as like a waterloo or maybe a u of t or queens yeah where you know like you were saying a lot of people just wouldn't have had it those are like the top kind of schools around here yeah so it's the serious academic types that would go to them yeah it's a little bit less so at ryerson yeah <laughs> not to like be down on my own school, <laughs> take that ryerson like, oh <laughs> i mean yeah yeah well but, I mean, school, water, water but... is like pretty good for it because we have at least uh, a decent amount of co-op programs that's true so the you call up at waterloo sounds yeah. good so uh, people are running into these difficulties of like not having a job interview not doing a resume early in the game while they're still doing their degree so at least it's not their future forever job probably not forever job but <laughs> job that you plan on keeping for at least a decent amount of time it's only for like a four month span so if you get a shit job it's not that big a deal or if you get no job it's not that big a deal but Still, you don't have any money, so yeah. that sucks. <laughs> but yeah, so that, you, well, Waterloo is pretty good for that because they prepare you early. So you're like, oh, geez, I should probably get a little bit of experience, get a little bit of, you know, know how to do work stuff. I imagine if we didn't have co-op here, then it would be a little bit more of an issue once people graduate and finally get into the workforce because they're like, oh, I actually don't really know how to get a job <laughs> or work at one, which is arguably the most important thing. On the subject of finance, as a general statement, would you say university is worth the cost, the tuition you have to pay to get in? Um, you can like clarify and like yeah, put whatever like asterisks you want on that. I would say 
if you're in a program that has a reasonable chance of employment in the field you study in, then yes. If you're doing a job that you will probably not get any uh, like well-paying job from, for instance, I met a couple of people who are spending like six, five to six thousand dollars a year, probably around more like five thousand dollars a year, to get a drama degree from University of Waterloo. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> Not to roast them. Maybe they know something I don't know. Maybe you get tons of jobs, but uh, I mean, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of super high-paying, stable acting jobs out there. Yeah. And if at the end of your degree you're gonna be forty thousand dollars in the hole. You might want to get a pretty more than that, probably like a hundred thousand when you're accounting for. Oh, with housing and stuff, but five thousand yeah. a year wouldn't that be like twenty? Oh, no, f- sorry, five thousand a term. Ah, okay, a term. That's yeah, five thousand a term. I was like, that's... wow, five thousand. That's yeah. actually pretty reasonable. No, 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 ten thousand a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, ten thousand yeah. a year. So it's forty thousand dollars for your program mm-hmm. just from school, and then from housing. Let's say. Yeah. Let's say you get a pretty good place. It's like five hundred dollars a month. So then in one year, that's $6,000 times four. It's $24,000 he just added on top. So no, that's 64. Yeah, $64,000, no house. books, no food. Yeah. So let's round that to, let's round that to $75,000. With food and books? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, most of that would probably be food, but. Yeah. And yeah. just incidentals. So that's $75,000 you've spent, which is more than a year's pay. From an entry level job, ten grand on food and books, but over over four years. Oh, over four years. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Um, That's more reasonable. Yeah. (laughs) My bad. (laughs) It's like, wow, that's a lot of food. (laughs) Very nice food. Ten grand on food. That would be amazing. For a year. For a year. No, I'm just kidding. No, but no. No, for four years, probably probably ten thousand dollars. I have absolutely no clue. Could be totally off. I'd be eating like three sixty every day. Let's say. Let's say. Fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars, which is probably around what you'll be making, maybe a little more than you'll be making in like a whole year of the job you get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's not like you can put all your money towards paying off student debt. And a lot of people just make the minimum payments any for anyways. Yeah, so it hangs over them for a little while. I think looking at the OSAP calculator, the average is like eight years that it takes people to pay it off. Usually. It's not as terrible as the uh, United States. Oh, God, no, it's nowhere <laughs> near as bad as the States. But, yeah, I would say if you have at least a reasonable chance of getting a decent paying job in the field you study, then yes, it's worth it. But if it's just purely based on interest and you don't have a lot of prospects, then I would say I hope you have a lot of money because yeah. just yeah. having a university degree does not necessarily make you better suited for the job. I mean, that's not to say you should, you know, drop out of university immediately and try to be the next Bill Gates from your garage. I mean, if you got a good idea, go for it. Go for it, but you you should be pretty sure about these things. I don't know. There's no no certain, oh, if this happens, then you'll make this much money. If this happens, you know, just judge on the situation. But I would say think, think, give the university and college and stuff at least some thought as to whether it's actually necessary for what you need to do. Yeah. Or what you want to do. That's true. I mean, on the Bill Gates thing, if you actually have like some kind of half decent idea, and if you go and pursue it for like a year or two, the university is still going to be there. The fact that yeah, you exactly. have this like great experience is might honestly be better than university in some mm-hmm. ways. So go for that if that ever comes up. But yeah, no, that's very true. I don't know. I uh, think just just think about if it's necessary for a lot of people. University probably is. But I just think a, a lot of people who are at university, like my my one cousin was uh, at university for a program that he found out he wasn't really interested in after like two years. So then he went to college and did something he was far more interested in. And that's, you know, paid off a lot better. He's found a job and stuff that is in his field that he studied in college and stuff. But... It probably would have been better if he discovered that quicker and didn't have to sp- spend two years in university to figure that out, you know? Yeah, I think like what you said, I think it's a good rule of thumb. Like, you're probably going to make more money if you're doing something you're passionate about or you're relatively interested in than something you hate. Well, I don't know about that. 
just because you're going to be better at it. Maybe. Well, but yeah, that's true. If you're really passionate about to an making paper toads. Yeah, do it. <laughs> in this day and age, you can like market them like crazy. Go on for internet. it. That'd be amazing. Some kind of paper. Say it's from empire. Japan. People will buy it. <laughs> Just move to Japan and then start yeah. selling it. And there. then sell it to North Americans and Europeans. That'd be perfect. Oh, yeah. It's a great business idea. I guess from there, some people <laughs> t- spend the first year or two basically just trying to figure out what they want to do. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't don't be that person. Take a gap year. Take two gap years. On that point, I was thinking a little while ago about taking a year off just because yeah. I was feeling really stressed. And I did some Googling. And apparently, if you get accepted to Harvard, when they send you the welcome package, the first piece of paper in it is a paper explaining why you should take a gap year. A gap year between going to Harvard and... Between going to Harvard and Oh, so you should defer your acceptance. Yeah, exactly. Like, they actively encourage you to do it because students perform better after they've done a gap year and gone, okay, yeah, I still want to do this. I have a little bit of experience in the world and I can confirm that this is what I want to do or then change to another thing that they actually want to do. That's honestly, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of my friends who did gap years, as long as they they were working full-time jobs, first of all, which they hadn't really done before. Like they'd worked like summer jobs and stuff, but they hadn't really worked full-time for more than two months. So working at something, just like, you know, having a job for a full year is pretty good experience, first of all. Yeah, it's fantastic. Working full-time for a year, you literally cannot have done that in high school. Nope. <laughs> um, so that's a good experience there. And then also it does allow you to really think about what you would, like if you want to do this, like you're thinking about if you're working in the field, which would be very fortunate, but a lot of people it's very difficult to do. Like if I took a gap year and I was working in physics, I don't know where I would get that job. Yeah. I, I mean, I worked as a production technician and there were physicists. Yeah, it's sometimes hard to but. it's hard to get the actual job, but you can I think generally get something close or nearby yeah. the job where you could like at least talk to someone who has the job. Yeah, exactly. Um, so thinking back, if I had taken a gap year and worked at I don't know, maybe found something at, like where I could be like just helping at a university or something like that, it's just like in a research department. Um, then I probably would have been like, this is really boring. I want to <laughs> work somewhere that's a lot more interesting. And then I wouldn't have. Luckily, it was still during my first year that I switched. So I didn't really waste much because all my courses were transferred. But I still would have known and had a little more money and a little more work experience and being a little more mature when I came to school. Yeah, no, definitely. Like it's It's so much better, even if it takes the same amount of time as trying to discover yourself for a year or two at university you end up with a positive net amount of money instead of a very negative net amount of money to learn that lesson, which is a very nice bonus because then you're better able to pay for school if you decide to do it, Yeah, (laughs) which is a very nice bonus. And if you don't, hey, you have money. Yeah, exactly. You can just keep doing the job that you found that you like, Mm -hmm. which would honestly be way better than deciding to go to school. If you don't want to do it. If you find a job that you yeah. like. Oh, yeah, exactly. And you can yeah, just yeah, keep yeah. going with it. Yeah. That would be the ideal. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, an asterisk that I'm going to add to the taking a gap year thing is if you're like 100% certain that you want to do this thing, I'm not sure how, but if you like had a part-time job in it in high school or you've just been around it a lot, you've done co-op in high school, maybe I didn't, but some people in my high school did. Uh, and you've been like, man, I love this then maybe like if you have the means then go straight to university yeah by all means or if you aren't gonna do anything during your gap year like you're not gonna work a full-time job or anything you're just gonna sit around the house and play Fortnite. i don't think you should do that <laughs> i think you should at least get a job yeah. uh if you're like or i think you should definitely get a full-time job if you're doing a gap year i don't think i don't think sitting around for a year has helped anybody sitting around is probably not good I don't mind the idea of like traveling. If people want to like explore a little bit, at least for like a couple months, that would be sick actually. Like backpack around here. If you have the funds. Yeah, no, that's true. If you have the funds, that would be pretty chill. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. I definitely encourage you to still at least like work for a couple months like full time. Oh yeah, working a full time job is a good asset. Yeah, just get that little bit of experience, get that little resume booster. That would 
really help you because then you have a little bit of experience just being at a full-time job, which gives you a bit of an advantage, both yeah. when you're looking to get a program and after you graduate, when you're getting an actual job. You just, you know a little bit more about what you want in a workplace in general. Do you know what we sound like right now? We sound like those two old dudes from the Muppets who are in the opera box. Oh, yeah. It's like, these dumb kids nowadays. I know, right? <laughs> just going straight to programs they don't care about. What are you doing? We are speaking from experience. Yeah. I know, that that is funny. Well, speaking as a young person, yes. I know that it is very hard to say, I'm going to delay this by a year because you feel like, you're wasting so much time and it can also be difficult because like for me it wasn't really like that because a lot of my friends stayed but there are a lot of situations where all your friends are leaving to go to school maybe they're even going to your school and you're like geez i really want to go with the like so much fun they're moving out of out of town and like into their own places and stuff like, like that looks you so can cool. still move out of town if you want yeah like but i don't think that experience itself is is worth enrolling in a degree that you don't really care about yeah no if you're if you're not sure what you want to do like if you're just thinking oh, i'll do a general this or that yeah just try and work a little bit at least first like for instance um one of my very good friends uh he wanted to go into music because he plays the viola and he has played other instruments as well and he was like all right uh, I would quite like to go into like classical music and stuff, maybe get in an orchestra if I could. So I will take a gap year sort of and not enroll in any post-secondary, but just get like music qualifications. So he took like specialized like la tw grade 12 courses at a different high school that specialized in music that was like in the city. And he just did some music qualifications like that. And then at the end of it, he didn't have to pay because obviously it was high school. Uh, oh, nice. It was high school courses, but he was like, he changed his mind. He didn't want to be in music anymore because he figured it wasn't for him. And now he's in math, mathematics at oh, Waterloo. Okay. Sick. <laughs> yeah. So, so that I, gap year entirely changed the course of what he was going to do. So if he'd just gone straight into music right then, then it would have been after a whole year of school. Then he would have been like, I don't want to do this. And maybe then even he wouldn't know what he did want to do instead. So that would have just been more issues. Shout out to you if you're listening and you know who I'm talking about. We've talked a lot about the idea of going into debt and just kind of assuming that people will. What do you think about that? The idea of basically taking out uh, debt to pay for school to get the degree. I think avoid it if you at all possibly can. I don't think it should be a deterrent from going to school. Like if you have a, like some debt, it's not the end of the world if you, can, if you have methods to pay it off uh, as soon as you can. But uh, I, I do think it should be considered. I think it should, be, it should be avoided if you can. Like personally, I'm glad I worked a lot in high school so I can, it just goes to university, you know? And my parents have like helped me out as well. Yeah, yeah. That's so, always nice. Yeah, yeah for sure. So... It's very nice uh, not being like, oh, I'm going to graduate and have to pay back like $50,000. Yeah, no. Because that, that would... That's not, that's not fun. It's not fun at all. Yeah, because so. it seems to me like it depends on the degree, but especially like, say, for example, like you get like a doctorate in doctor or what? medicine. Oh, yeah, medicine. Yeah, go to med school. <laughs> I'm going to become a doctor of being a doctor. <laughs> It's not technically accurate, but is not that what it's called. Thing? Being a doctor in doctors? I guess that's that's med school. That's just a know. med school. Okay. Anyways. Your doctorate is just graduating. Like, I, I think it's more chill here than it is in, say, the U.S., but there you can graduate with, like, 300 grand or something in debt. It's freaking... Yeah. It's, like, I think it's around... It can be, like, fifty to 60000 I think, per year. Yeah. Which here is, like, the cost of your entire undergrad. Yeah. And so it's essentially four times the price. And at that point, it kind of seems a little bit similar to a bit of like indentured servitude. In Jeez. That... <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, not quite. It's an extreme uh, comparison for <laughs> yeah. sure. It's an exaggeration. But there are similarities in that 
you've taken on this massive amount of debt in order to get something yeah. and now you're trained to do one job you can do it wherever you want but you have one yeah. job to do and you have to take that one high paying job in order to pay back the debt <laughs> before you can really change to something else yeah like if you're trained to be a doctor you got to be a doctor you can do something else in the doctor field but you have to do that same with like a lawyer and anything else where you pay like a lot of money and have the possibility of getting like a high paying job you have to take the high paying job yeah because you just have like hundreds of thousands of dollars you need to pay. those yeah. are american dollars those are big dollars this is very big dollars i mean it's possible to pay it off real quick because once you're out of uh what do they what do they call it when you're like starting out of the hospital once you're out of that oh residency rent yeah once you end that you can start making like three or four hundred thousand a year or whatever i know so you can pay off but you have to you know really commit to getting rid of that debt yeah and then imagine if you fail (laughs) you're like in third year schooling that's a very good point Oof. not even just the doctor with school in general if you don't finish the degree get all the credits you need there's no economic advantage to going to university well there's much much more disadvantage so much more. extreme disadvantage because there's a very like negligible difference between the amount on average that you'll make as a university dropout and someone just with like a high school degree yeah diploma so but now you have this amount of debt this mountain of debt which yeah. really puts you at a disadvantage so you have to make sure that you're really committed to the degree and that you're going to see it through the end otherwise there's no point yikes yeah. I'm spooked. <laughs> yes, you I do not that. fail. So that's pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's good, good heavy note. On a lighter note, yeah. Have you seen any good films lately? <laughs> Ooh, I guess I watched Spider Man recently. Oh, the second one. Yeah, the second one. That was the solid. Into the Mysterio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. very that good. That's a good one. That and The Lion King, which was also. Oh, solid. you saw it? Yeah. See, I want to see that. It looks really interesting. Because it's, quote, live action. I mean, it's still animated, but it's just fancier animation. Yeah, it's pretty good animation. Yeah, but, like, I feel like it won't be as good for me because I didn't watch The Lion King as a kid. I saw it for the first time when I was, like, 15 or 16 years old. I mean, probably not because you won't have the nostalgia, but it's still a solid story. Like, it's based off of Hamlet, right? Yeah. So, it's a solid movie. Yeah, I remember my parents never showed us Disney movies when we were kids because they thought they were too, like messed up a little bit for instance like cinderella they're like well she's basically just like a slave until she gets like married off to the prince and then she can leave and i'm like oh yikes i don't i don't really want to see that i think the only one we saw as a kid was mulan and also fantasia i watched fantasia every day it was just basically an acid trip to classical music is there anything else that you would like to discuss you know what let's just go to the end I wanted to see if you had any tips or guidelines on how to get the most out of university if you choose to go to it. I would say look at jobs before, like see if you program if there are jobs, what the jobs are, and if you maybe like to do them. Get experience with at least some work if you don't have it yet, preferably work in the field that you would be going into. And just don't make the decision lightly. Don't just be like, oh, well, I'm good at school, so I'm going to go to university. That might not be the best course for you or the most, like, related to what you're passionate about. Yeah, I think that's good. Just make sure you really consider it before you jump into it. Think yeah. about it hard because it is not the only option. No. Just, I know a lot of people think that it is the only option. Which, I mean, fair enough, you're like, what, 17, 18, when you make yeah. the decision? It's it's kind of ridiculous that you have to decide right then what you're going to do for the next, like, few years. Or even 16, because I had to, I think it's still 16. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, also, just on a slightly separate note from this, like, the idea that they just kind of give, like, $100,000 loans to, like, a 16-year-old or 17-year-old. Yeah. Wow. It's insane. <laughs> I mean, that's rare. Wait, you're doing scholarships? No, I mean like OSAP loans, like government loans. loans. Yeah, Yeah. like you don't get like that much all at once, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they give a lot of loans to teenagers. Yeah, exactly. To pay off eventually, which is ridiculous. If you just went to a bank and said, "I need that money," like 
It's not gonna happen. Like what? <laughs> Hello. Like they might give you like five grand at the end at a bank if they're like, all right, yeah, you can pay it off after you get the degree. But tips to get the most at a university, kind of like what you said, I would say have specific goals for during university, like what you want to accomplish besides just getting the degree. Like you've said, you one of your goals is like to learn Spanish, which yeah. is an interesting other goal to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've. I want to keep the languages I have learned, French, and also English, but that's my native language. <laughs> yeah, don't lose the English, man. <laughs> and I've taken two Spanish courses, but I want to keep taking them, maybe get a minor, mm. and probably German as well, so I can talk to my sister in German. Okay. And you. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to relearn German for that, too. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, that thing. that's pretty much it. But, yeah... Either goals like that or maybe something to do with extracurriculars as well. Because I think that would be good to join something. Yeah. I'd say preferably one like maybe related to your field in some way and then one like fitness club so you're not just a blob throughout <laughs> university. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, university is definitely a different experience because you have to, you're thrown from too much structure probably for your liking yeah in later high school which is you're like oh i don't want my parents to tell me what to do mm, I don't yeah want to, i don't have to be at school between 8 to two thirty every day you know like i want to uh like i want to just do my own thing mm-hmm. and just like because you like told like your school day your whole day is planned your parents plan most of your life and make rules and stuff that's i should at that age and like you like your extracurriculars are planned and stuff so it feels like a lot of structure but the next year if you go to post-secondary all of that is gone all you have to do is attend classes and that's literally it you have to pay them and attend classes <laughs> and that's yeah. and that's maybe like half of the class time that you did in high school and it's much more sporadic so it's not like you go stay there for a certain amount of time and then leave you just have to get yourself to these classes at a certain time, and then you just have to do the work. It's not like you come home and do homework for one hour. It's just like you just have to do the work that is given. At some point, it is. yeah, yeah. And it's due in like a month, so yeah. you just have to remember. Yeah. So it's important to know how to make a structure for yourself. That's very and true. Fitness probably does help with that. Because- Refer to podcast episode two. Uh, I forget what I called it about productivity. Oh. Productivity gods. That, that was the name. There we go. That was a yeah. plug in there. <laughs> we talk a lot about how to be productive as a student. So check it out. Yeah. And fitness does help. Because if yeah. you're already scheduling stuff like that in. Or like practices in. Like, you know, gym sessions. Like runs. Stuff like that. Yeah. In your regular life. Then it does help with creating a little bit of structure. Obviously yeah. not the only thing. But no, but on that, I heard um, a saying somewhere, I forget where, I think some TV show or something. Yeah. When you go off to school, uh, your priorities should be number one, to take care of your health. Number two, to take care of your morals. Make sure you're not doing anything you would consider wrong. And number three, yeah, like your studies. <laughs> yeah, so don't, don't do drugs. I mean, I guess it's legal here now, depending on yeah. the drug. Oh, but yeah. So you can do... Yeah, and three years studies. Okay. Your studies. So make sure you're healthy first, you're not doing anything wrong second, and then that you're passing your courses third. Yeah. Because if you die or get really sick, you can't study. If you're doing something wrong, <laughs> you you're not going to study. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then if you don't study, you're not going to pass. So, but that's that's your third concern. Yeah. I think that's that's a really important point to make to especially those who really obsess over the grades a little bit. Tell it, man. Yeah. Like, I was saying to my friend the other day, I have never pulled an all letter, I think, in my life. No? Except for weird jet lag, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been places, but I've never been like, oh, I need to do this task, so I'm literally not going to sleep until it is done, because I... I, like I, it's it's so it's it, it's so incredibly bad for you mm-hmm. pulling a whole all nighter that just the pros and cons don't really add up. Like I've never had like a like twenty five percent project due the next day and not started it. You know, like first of all, don't get yourself in a point where it's completely unavoidable to do an all nighter or you will fail a class. Yeah, but that's not good. <laughs> if it's like a small thing, you're like, oh, I need to finish this, and it'll take like five hours and it's midnight, guess I'll just do it. 
Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I've been starting to come around to that point of view. I I don't think I've ever pulled a complete all nighter. Like I think I have gone to bed at like six or seven a.m. before because I've just been working the night. But I don't think I've slept for at least like two hours or so, one or two. But yeah. that's it's not it's not good, and for the most part, it's not really worth it. Exactly. Like it's definitely good to reiterate the point gotcha. that I made in the health that sleep is an amazing thing. Like every single animal, and I think a lot of plants sleep for a reason. It's because it's super useful, and you need it. Yeah. So make sure that you're getting enough sleep because it gives you like superpower bonuses when you are awake. <laughs> oh, another thing back on sleep and stuff. Yeah. I was reading this article that was basically an excerpt from a 1920s, I think it was. It was 1910s or 1920s. Okay. Fitness thing. All right. And we think that we've learned so much about fitness back in the day. But if you literally you can follow the advice from this like 1918 fitness book and you will be a very healthy person. It's mm-hmm. like reserve at least one hour a day, preferably in the early afternoon for exercise and leisure, such as running or swimming or even long walks. Eat like a lot of vegetables and fruits and stuff. Don't drink or smoke. Mm-hmm. And it actually said get nine hours sleep if you wish to be a well-performing athlete and 10 never hurt anybody which nowadays is like ridiculous yeah that'd be amazing like, well i usually get about four hours of sleep a night and i'm fine that blows my mind when people are like yeah i sleep three or four hours a night how are you functioning how are you alive seriously yeah. so keeping yourself relatively healthy from a like knowledge-based standpoint it's not that hard. You already know everything you need to know. Like, yeah. eat, eat a healthy breakfast, lunch, and dinner with lots of fruits and vegetables in it. Get some protein and stuff. And then just, like, be active for a, at least an hour a day. Running, swimming, walking, lifting, anything like that. And sleep. Yeah. There you go. You will sleep. be healthy if you do all those things. So those are uh, three main points, unless yeah. Unless you have some other issue. <laughs> yeah and it does take time to do that like you said you need to reserve the hour for exercise or i would say eight or nine hours of sleep and that's that's why they say intellectually because almost everybody knows what they have to do to be healthy but knowing you're doing it are different things it's not it's not that easy it's not just like oh just get 10 hours of sleep at night like it (laughs) yeah that's not very easy a lot of the time but just you like you know what you have to do yeah And I think a lot of the time when you're caught up in the moment, you think, oh, but this assignment, I have to get it done right now because it's so important. But like that happens every other day. Yeah. You have to realize that you're always going to be like that and that you have to just somehow make the time or prioritize your health every now and then so that you're able to sustainably get through school and not die or get really (laughs) sick throughout it. I agree. And that if you really prioritize it, it'll make you a lot more, a lot better at your schoolwork and a lot more efficient at it. And it'll probably take less time to get through. Yeah. Like you do have those, those people who like go to sleep at 8 a.m. every day and wake up at noon Mm -hmm. and then get good grades. But those are the outliers. It's not like if I do, I think if most people did that, they would do much worse at their studies. And the people who do do that probably if they had a regular night's sleep, would be better than they're already doing. Yeah. Even if they already just have a lot of natural talent. Like, there do, there do exist people in the world that can function just as well with less sleep, say five or six yeah. hours, but those are the exception, and probability has it that you are not one of those yeah. people. And that will never help. It just might not hinder. Yeah, or it probably is actually hindering you. Probably but you just, just can't realize it because you're constantly exhausted. Yeah. When I say you, I mean past me. Maybe yeah. you're you're well yeah. off. I don't know. Same with me in first year. I literally got probably five hours of sleep most nights. Like that was like pretty regular. I would sleep from like Oof. two to seven. And yeah. Then, but I was like, ah, I'm a little tired in the mornings. But then past that, I was all right. But then now, <laughs> if I sleep from like 
1 a.m. to 8.30, which is, like, or no, 1 a.m. to 8 a.m., which is, like, seven hours sleep. If I get, like, six and a half to seven hours sleep, I'm, like, holy shit, I'm so tired. Yeah. And I don't want to diminish or take away from the point that this does take time. It does take yeah. effort. Like, I, I tried for quite a while unsuccessfully to prioritize sleep. Like, I, I was doing a good sleep, but then I just didn't have time for, like, things like homework. And it is a balancing act to figure out how to get it all done. But yeah. it, it's something that's worth pursuing, worth trying to figure out. Yeah. I would say probably the yeah, biggest priority. Yeah. Just because even if you're if, if you're not increasing your productivity, you'll just feel so much better. Oh, my God. Yeah. You have so, so much better like an outlook on life in yeah. general. Yeah. Like I find that like if I'm having a bad week, it's almost always like when I – look back on like my week it's not actually that bad it's just because i haven't been getting enough sleep and then if mm. i have like eight and a half hours of sleep like when i've been having a bad week and i wake up i'm like oh i'm fine mm. <laughs> interesting I'm good, yeah yeah. Hmm. yeah that's very interesting that yeah if you get enough sleep your entire outlook on all your work can change mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i would say we've covered a variety of topics today yeah is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Or... Oh, yeah, I guess the other two points I had on just tips is generally if you can live close to campus or on it just to maximize like the amount of time you can spend with people and networking yeah. so that you or, don't have to spend like hours each day commuting. Yeah, I mean, living like relatively close to campus, even if it's like an hour bus ride, that would still be a lot. But... Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I have about an hour and it's not good. Because it makes it a lot harder to do like extracurriculars because those all all happen in like the evening after school. So you have to bum around and then it wouldn't be worth it to go home. Yeah. Exactly. Well, no, I usually don't do that. I just go home, pass out, then go to my 8 a.m. class the next morning. Oh, okay. And yeah. then eventually I just kind of quit stuff. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. or just stop going to some of the classes in the morning. Mm. which is nice whenever that's possible but that and just chill out you know it's it's a couple years it's a degree it's a tool you yeah. use to try and get a help head in life it isn't your life and well not yet yeah, a lot of a lot of um especially like high school and university age people i find make this mistake but it's a pretty universal mistake among all people is thinking like oh this specific phase of my life like oh the grades i get in grade 11 and 12 will define the whole rest of my life or like Mm -hmm. oh getting this degree and doing well in this class to get this degree will define the whole rest of my life but like the whole rest of you you're taking it moment by moment yeah it's not like i don't think anybody has ever been like oh i i didn't focus on this one specific task and now my entire life is just over (laughs) unless they're a bomb diffuser yeah, I, <laughs> oof, <laughs> big oof there. Yeah. But remember, like, uh, no matter how important something might seem, it's still not the rest of your life. The whole it's really not. You will yeah. have the rest of your life is the rest of your life. It sounds obvious, but like, there's never just there's never like a game over. You can yeah. like you're always just taking it as it is, like yeah. as it comes. I mean, and if it all goes completely wrong, you can start over really an unlimited time limited number of times throughout your life yeah and just pursue something new because why not i think what people have like four or five different careers throughout their life or isn't it like three the average like completely different careers and fields i think that's the number i forget where i heard that so that could be completely wrong but it's something like that i know that my father has had let's say two okay because it's been like you know, transitioning from being an engineer to like working as like business more like okay, yeah. And then my mother has had let's say four or five. Yeah. So that seems about right. My grandfather, like my mother's father, had like eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it really depends, but Yeah. So it does depend for sure. But even this university degree that you think or that you're working really hard on because, you know, you like it and maybe you have a great job waiting for you afterwards that you have in mind. Mm-hmm you still might not do it forever and eventually yeah. you might find something better or that it's you not, like it's more. not going to plan the whole rest of your life yeah there's exactly. a lot more <laughs> yeah 
Yes, that was a nice note to end on, actually. Yeah, much lighter note than a lot of the other yeah. stuff that came before. You're good, man. You yeah, you're going to be fine. <laughs> okay, so that will conclude for this week. And that is us signing Ooh, up, I guess. Actually, we oh. wanted to whoa, assign whoa. homework for next week, oh, actually. You? Yeah, I believe. I take that back. Yeah, stay with us. Don't Don't go. Hold on. So next episode, we wanted to assign some homework for you, the listener, to do, because next episode, we wanted to do uh, the bucket list episode that we talked about right. in episode zero. Basically, the idea is that I'm thinking we both make some bucket list, I don't know, 10 to 20 kind of things, possibly, just of items that if once you get to the end of your life, you think back and you say, all right, I accomplished these things. My life was good. Yeah. It was a solid life. I accomplished all things that I want to. Yeah. All right. And Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, I know, right? Like specifically that thought that if I accomplish all these things, that's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe pick like a top five almost that right. we can focus on in the episode. I think we'll both do that. And if you, the listener, would do that as well, I think that would really benefit you. Mm-hmm. Most of you we know in person, so we're going to tell you. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be on you. Make sure you're doing this homework. (laughs) But I think that it would benefit you because it forces you to uh, commit to an answer. And, you know, there isn't really a right or wrong here, but we might have some similar ones to you. And we'll talk through a little bit of the reasoning of why it's the things we wrote down. And we'll maybe critique each other's a little bit to see if it's, you know, something it's good. It's something that you should want to uh, try and finish by the end of your life. I think that would they help you maybe uh if you try and do it again afterwards too all righty so yeah do that i'll work on it (laughs) sick all right that has been us standard humans peace out goodbye listeners